of our academy of this free course, Threshold. You can register for Threshold if you're on Facebook, if you're watching this or watching the replay and you haven't registered yet, but you do want to attend day two, three, and four, you're going to want to go to academy.unlockyourdesign.com and you'll see Threshold there and you'll be able to register and you'll get an email with the Zoom and all the good details that you need. And I'm so, so thrilled that we have those of you on live inside our Zoom webinar. Um, and then those of you watching Facebook, super glad that you're here. I'd love for you to say hello. I'd love to know that you're watching. Um, and we can't wait to begin. Uh, Bella, Simone, did you want to say anything as we're opening this container <laughs> for day one? I think you're muted though, Bella. You're muted. If you're in the webinar, you are wanna you want to change so that you write to panelists and attendees so that not only we see that you're here so it's not like the normal chat in a meeting you just want to change it to panelists and attendees and then everybody sees you say hi and you know that that's more fun during the webinar if we can all you know interact yes yes simone any anything to say as we open the container Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I know that thresholds are in the fractal. We've been experiencing them ourselves and we've been uh, working with our business by design um, participants and thresholds abound. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with us today. We are so super excited. Yeah. So um, to begin, this masterclass has kind of been coming through us for a little bit of time now. And we had been trying to figure out the name for it for a while. We knew kind of what we wanted to do within it. And um, things started to evolve as we, as we started getting closer to um, the Aries transits, which had a lot of fire in them. And then the name completely changed. And we were like, oh my gosh, all the energies changed. So we, the way that we do things is we're normally like very in the moment because we don't plan things out super far in advance because the energy changes. Because as you know, if you're, if you're into human design or gene keys, I mean, we follow, we follow a transit every six days and the sun activates a new gate, one of the 64 gates. And we'll talk about that later if you're brand new to that, but they have their own energy. They have their own personality. And so when you're in that energy, it definitely feels different. And you'll be able to start to notice the shift as you start to um, be sensitive to the transit. So what we're saying here is right now we're in the transit of the 51. And the 51 is, um, the gene key frequency is agitation to initiative to awakening. And this is the gate of shock in human design. And so I don't know like what has been coming up for you guys recently. Bella, do you know what line we're in? Like how many days have we been in this gate? I can check maybe line three. Two or three? Simone says two. So we're in, we're in the second line, maybe going into the third line soon of the 51st transit. And if this is the gate of shock, I'm wondering like what's coming alive for you right now? What are you feeling? What showed up in your life? We'd love to see in the comments, um, kind of like, like what's, what's kind of come up over the past two days for you, if anything, or do you feel this kind of agitation or anticipation building inside of you? I'm wondering. Um, Bella, did you want to um, share anything else just about uh, the transit? Yeah, it does feel like a lot of thunder and, and fire. We are actually right, we just went into line three. So it is this human experience of walking and falling and burning and then, you know, kind of taking off the dirt and, and continuing again. So I, I really feel like that is the energy of this transit. And it's to feel that thunder of kind of something, anticipation, something is, is happening. Uh, and I feel like the main question for today is, you know, are you alive? Because if you're alive, you're gonna feel this. And some of us, we prefer to not be alive, to not feel the thunder, to not feel the fire. And at the end of the day, what I feel with human design and gene keys is that they, they show us who we are. And then it's up to us if we want to be alive as that or not. So are, we, are you alive? And when you are alive, it's very hard for you to hide what kind of animal you are. And for me, a lot of this masterclass is about the courage to be you. Because when you are you by design, that's what's part of the equation. 
know, that you came here to live up, then you can actually thrive. Uh, and I feel like these transits are making it a little, are highlighting it even more. Are you alive? Are you alive as agitation and unease? Or are you alive as initiative and following your intuition, which is the programming partner, 5751, you know, unease, agitation, or initiative, or and following your intuition as it takes you, as the wind, you know. So wind and thunder are is the earth and the and the and the sun right now. Mm -hmm. And here's um, these are Karen Curry Parker's cards, and you can see that the fifty first gate comes out of um, the heart, the will. So there's that. And then these are Rosie's Wisdom Keeper cards. So this is fifty one, the Wisdom Keeper. Awesome. Okay, so. Today, we are talking about courage. And before we kind of get into that, I think it's important for us to go into thresholds. I don't know if, if many of you understand the term or have heard the term before, threshold. Um, but a threshold can be a couple different things. So first of all, we consider the threshold that... Um, that frame that that holds the door right we have we have where you step through the threshold of your front door and it's it's just you it's just the the bottom part right the threshold it's you can you can say when people get married the tradition is to carry the woman over the threshold and it's where you are going from the outside into the inside of the house so there's always like this transition point and that transition point is the threshold and we have tons of thresholds that we approach throughout our whole life. And they're just opportunities for us to say yes, to walk through the door. Um, sometimes we don't even realize what kind of thresholds we're, we're going through. We just walk through them. And some of them, we start to feel that, that, that energy and it's agitation because we know we're approaching something that we've never been through before. And that could be jarring because you get there and you're like, oh man, I feel like, I wasn't expecting this. It's like shocking sometimes. You're like, oh, it's a decision that I have to make. A decision to move forward or a decision to like be like, no thanks, I don't wanna do it. And so why we are calling this cur the courage to thrive and why day one is all about courage is because you have to have some amount of courage in you to move forward through a threshold that maybe you've never been through before, or maybe you've been through and you, you remember this energy and you're like, man, last time I went through here, it was horrible. I don't think I can do that again. And we want, we want to help you discern kind of what, what's the best decision for you? How do you decide which thresholds to say yes to, which thresholds to walk through? And like, what's your compass? What's your barometer? How do you tell if you should say yes or no to that threshold. Um, so yeah, Simone, Bella, did you wanna elaborate on threshold or, or do you have any questions you might wanna ask them? No, I, I would love for, for you guys to kind of feel into and think about all the thresholds you may have had come into your life. What were those like? What what were the different thresholds? Maybe the decision to like marry someone, like the yes or the no. You know, they they give you the ring and you're like, or they present the ring and you get to decide. That's a threshold because you know when you step through that door, you're stepping through into partnership. Or maybe, I mean, can you post in the chat kind of what you what you believe might might have been a threshold for you? Or Bella and Simone, did you want to say kind of what thresholds you've been presented in your life? Yeah, for me, I feel like opportunity has been the thing. I'm a four or six, so it's already opportunities. And then I have 28 in my moon and my pearl. So there has always been this element of risk of Scorpio. And I knew that there was an opportunity, but sometimes that opportunity was on the other side of the world, or that opportunity was to start a life with somebody, like you're saying. Like it's, And I've always gone for the opportunity. And I, I've done it kind of 
like with that daredevil, like, okay, if this doesn't work out, at least I'm going to speak Italian or like, you know, it's like, it's been very, it's been, it's not been logical. For me, a threshold is not super logical. It's not super logical, even if there is love to kind of put yourself legally with another person forever. And it's not super logical to go to a country where you don't speak the language and you don't, you don't, you're not even a citizen and you try to do something that would be much easier to do in your own country. So for me, threshold is something that is not logical, but it's a portal that you know that for your evolution, you have to go through it. And you don't actually really care about failure. You care about being alive. And that's for me, that, that's what I come back to with this master class. So it's like, are we alive? Are you alive? Are you feeling turned on by being here? Or are you feeling like, oh, it's too early or it's too late? And why was it this time for me? Like, you know, are you bitching about your life or are you alive in your body, in where you are right now? Are you drinking something that makes you like turned on? Or are you drinking a diet Coke that is like more dead than, than you might feel, you know? Like that that's for me what I what I'm interested in and what I feel threshold is. Like, are you are you are you drinking a dead diet coke or are you drinking? Thinking something else that actually nurtures you or turns you on or you know make whatever it is but how is that choice in every moment there is like a threshold in every moment when you choose to merge with somebody to work with somebody to drink something that's what what's alive for me gosh bella i love that thank you thank you thank you um and for me i, I like bella um there's so many thresholds and I was, as I was listening to you, I was thinking about how with my 35 and in my evolution, I'm constantly choosing, you know, new thresholds. And some of those are internal, some of those are personal, and some of those are in my engagement with other people. As a projector, there are all kinds of invitations and then I have to discern, is this my invitation? And to understand the alignment within myself, to not just receive um, an invite without really going in and, you know, is this the invite for me? And I mean, even when I was really young and I didn't even know about um, human design, uh, I remember major invitations where I just kind of sat in my room and tuned into that. Is this an invitation for me? So there are those kinds of invitations. And then, you know, there are the internal thresholds where I'm contemplating something. And for me, a lot of the internal ones are when I've bumped up against something. Um, maybe something has provoked me. Um, maybe I'm wanting to choose something majorly different in my life. And then those are, those are thresholds that I go, I enter through my vessel. And then they're, they're just, you know, my own choices in life. Like you said, a choice to eat food that's alive or a choice to go out and do something every day, you know, be physical every day or not, or a choice to um, have a certain point of view or not. Um, to take, you know, to, you know, they're, they're, it, for me, it's a fractal of, um, of thresholds. And it, uh, the more I do this, the more I realize how quickly um, an internal threshold becomes an external threshold. Sometimes it's, it, it's so, you know, and the more aware of, I, of it I am, the more aware of the choices to be alive, the quicker that internal external um, threshold connection becomes. So it's super exciting. I'm super grateful for those external thresholds because I view everything that is outside of me as manifesting from me. So whenever it enters my field, I'm like, ooh, okay, that's for me. What does it mean? And I'm either like figuring out the pattern, the formula, or why it happened. And I love doing that. I love, I love looking at the signs of life and thresholds, thresholds for me, like it just makes me, I'm just smiling over here because I have the 51 in my attractor sphere and it's 51.6 and I know what it feels like inside of me. And I never, 
I never thought of it as like a threshold, but it is a threshold. Um, the other day we opened the pool in my house, not in my house, but in my backyard, we opened the pool and the kids, it was like six at night and it's still cold. So the water's freezing. And um, my kids wanted to go in the pool and my husband's like, oh, we're going to go in the pool. And everybody's scared because they know it's going to be cold and nobody wants to go in. And my husband's like, let's all line up and we're going to jump in and nobody wants to do it. They're like, I'm going to go put my toes in and we're going to get used to it. And Justin's like, no, no, no we got to jump in. And, and everybody's like, kind of, I don't know. They're over by the, the shallow end about to go into the water. And Justin's like, you guys, this is how you do it. And he like, just like does a, a front flip into the pool, whoosh, splash. And then all the boys are like, oh, yeah. And then they all just jump in and they're like, okay, somebody has got to go first, you know? And I didn't want to go in because I knew how cold it was. And Justin was like, and it's, we were in, we were in the 51st transit, I believe. And Justin was like, you need the shock. And I'm like, he doesn't even know the language and he's using it. He's like, you need the shock. This shock is good for you. Like come in and do it. And I did it. It was an opportunity that I had that I didn't. I had my clothes on. I didn't want to do it. But if I was living life fully and I was sitting, I was sitting there watching them. I was like, damn it. I should have fucking jumped in. I should have jumped in. But I remember another time last year where the same thing happened to me and I, I got into my body. I'm like, I don't want to do this, but I feel like I have to do this. And I don't care how cold it is. And I did it. And the shock was invigorating. You know, when you jump in that cold water and you're like, oh my God, I feel alive. That is why we have thresholds to jump in and feel alive. And yeah, it might suck at first. You're like, man, it's freaking cold. But like, I feel more alive right now than I have ever just like pacing the hallway being like oh there's a door oh there's a door oh I'm not gonna go through that I'm comfortable just like my routine going back and forth down the hall and going in the in the doors that I feel comfortable in okay there's that opportunity okay that and then we get so comfortable that we're like man that ominous door over there I don't know what's behind it I don't know you know I know that I have the key but I don't think I want to go there and but are you going to do that your whole life you're going to die without opening that door that door's for you, but you're not going to go through it. It's just insane to me. So when we have the awareness of the opportunity and the threshold being there, it's like, oh, how can we discern if like now is the time, you know, and is this the right opportunity for me? Sometimes you know what's behind the door. Sometimes you don't. And you just got to trust. And what does it mean, you know, to trust? Trusting in yourself, trusting in the other, trusting in the higher power. I don't know. Do I have a question like, do, do courage and trust go hand in hand? Is that something that you need to have to be able to be courageous? I'm wondering, I mean, what do you guys I, think? I would say faith, not trust, because trust is almost like, okay, it's logical. I can trust, but faith is not, a, faith is not logical. So what you need is faith and then you can build trust. And there, it feels for me like a synchronicity when I hear you speak, Ashley, because we, I don't still don't know why we decided in our core spaces by design to start with a pearl, because that is the last sphere of everything in the hologenic profile. But we decided to start there, and it we we could feel like it was a little bit of a like when we did it, it's it's like it's not easy. It's a little bit of a shock to start with the last sphere. And what I feel is that because we are in that energy and we kind of, we, we didn't change it. We were there. It's not super comfortable, but we're still there and we're going to be there for a month. And there, I feel like there's a synchronicity with, with this today that when we look at the pearl, that is Jupiter, that's personality Jupiter, that is our law. And whatever that gene key and that line says, that is a really good, that is a really good way of checking yourself if you are being alive like if you're living out your pearl and your line you are you know gonna you're gonna meet all these thresholds that are here for expansion jupiter is your law that when you when you when you follow that he's the guardian that makes sure that you're gonna expand so that feels like a good way like that's a little bit the homework i would say for today tomorrow is going to be much more human design related and much more technical and i feel like from today to grasp something is like are you living the law of your pearl are you listening to your Jupiter? I'm the daredevil in a third line. So what I was just saying of taking those risks is exactly what I'm here to do. Ashley has the, the, the eternal child, the third line. So her creativity is part of like what makes her meet new things, you know, all the time. So I would look for all of us. Are you, are you obeying in a good 
way, uh, you know, that are you not obeying, are you embodying that per that pearl jinky and that pearl line? Um, yeah. And how how can you think of times when embodying that that there has been not just a door, but actually something opening, an opportunity, like there has been something that you're stepping into through saying yes to this is, this is my essence. This is what I live by. This is my law. Mm. Post your, post your um, pearl in, in the box, in the chat box. We'd love to see what your pearls are. And I love looking at it in that, in that way as the thresholds, like why wouldn't, like your soul wants expansion. So why wouldn't it bring you these opportunities in the way that you're weighing them is like, Am I living my law or not? And if mine is the eternal child and it's about innovation and creativity, it's also about seeing life through the eyes of a child. So wouldn't it be my kids to be like, mom, get in the pool. Like, come on, you got to have fun with us. Like, you know, I'm here to be childlike as well. So, and that's what helps me be creative because there's no limitations and restrictions when you're in childlike energy. They're just innocent all the time. They're like, everything's new. We can create with anything. They can have fun with a box and they do have fun with the box because they can make it a spaceship they can make it a car they can do make it a house they do whatever they want with it because they there's no limits and nobody's saying you can't do that or you shouldn't do that or this is the way that we work with boxes you know and then we limit 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 the creativity so and see that lower frequency as a warning sign. So I have 28, which is purposelessness. The day I wake up and feel purposeless, I know that I'm not living out my pearl. I might be drinking too much diet, diet Coke, or, you know, I might, I, I have forgotten my essence. And it's not bad. Like we know that the shadow is not bad, but when you feel that frequency, I see in the chat, we have the doubt of the 63. We have the fear of failure of the 32. You know, when you are feeling that, you know that there are more doors that want to be open so that you can expand. It's just showing you that there is a contraction instead of an expansion. So really, I would say the frequency band of the pearl is really a way shower for us as how fully are you stepping into your, have, do you have the courage to step into your purpose? And if you have initiative like the 51 there, it's going to be quite scary, you know, because you're going to have that thunder energy and you're going to have to embody that energy and hold it inside your physical ves vessel and have your emotional body be okay with that agitation energy as well. Because it's, yeah, that kind of evolution. But it's here, it's here to awaken something in you. Like all of these potential that like you have in your pearl, then your key to expansion is all about awakening these parts of you that are ready like you're ready to walk through the door of this part of you it's like oh my gosh awakening to that new that it's like we're moving closer and closer to our whole self to our to ourself and and allowing those 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 possibilities to to awaken you to something deeper inside of you so expansion inward and expansion outward simone did you want to say anything about your um your well part? i i want to i want to uh i mean what you're saying is that you know for me often it is a shock or when I'm provoked that m takes me inside and go, and I'm like, oh, why am I provoked by this? And, and then once I start really like looking at, oh, what's that? And then I can see how, you know, I wasn't, you know, maybe I'm pro provoked in something that's non-personal, you know, like, um, but still provoking. And then I go inside and then I'm like, oh, damn, <laughs> there's the whole pattern in my life. You know, like uh, I got to choose something different now. And I often say I'll feel clunky about it because it's choosing something new or, or something different than the condition choice. If you haven't done it before, it can feel for me really clunky and so, to have the courage to, you know, um, you know, do it, even choose it, even though it feels clunky, you know, and, and not perfect, but you'll, you know, I know I'll get there, you know, and I, I'll often, if, if it's with, if, you know, if I see the pattern and I, I'm going to root it out like a weed, you know, and I'll, I'll say to my family, Hey, I'm going to choose something different right here. And it's probably going to come out clunky. And I'm sorry if I upset you, <laughs> the way I say this, please be patient with me. I just want to choose something different, you know, and they'll laugh at me, you know, because I'll, I, I, I own it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm shifting. It's a threshold. I want to do something different. I haven't, you know, I haven't worn these roller skates before I haven't ridden this but you know I haven't jumped off this cliff before so <laughs> I might not do it with grace yet you know so but I, I'll still choose because I, I want to walk through the threshold you know because I know um when are you were talking earlier and I was like oh yeah and then you can I, I actually feel the 
the Merkaba is opening up, opening up quicker and quicker and quicker every time I choose like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's so much, uh, I have so much motivation. And in terms of my, my personal one, you know, um, mine's fantasy, anticipation and emanation. And if you've been with us, uh, so long, if you've been with us for any of these, you know, I'm always in anticipation and, and, and I get so excited about everything that we're doing. So it's super fun for me. Um, mm -hmm. this, is Earl Simone's, this is Simone's profile. So we had told you guys, you could, you can pull up your gene key chart, your human design chart. If this is the first time that you're seeing this, or you're very new to it, we're asking you about the pearl right here. So Simone is this is Simone's 41.4. And Bella talked about hers, which is 28.3. So Nash, you're... maybe show it on the human design because tomorrow we're going to sure. have more human design people, I think, with the motivation mm -hmm. stuff. So this is Simone's and and let me let me zoom in a little bit. And you would find it right here. So Down on the root. Personality side right here with the four, that's Jupiter. And then this is Simone right here, 41. And it's actually one of, you know, the 41 is one of my few channels um, in terms of human design. So I have that, uh, you know, the 41, mm -hmm. um, 30. So it's super powerful for me when I am um, living my gift and um, super po powerful if I'm not too. <laughs> so. You know, Simon, that's a really good point because this is when we go into human design mechanics and we see, okay, Simone is having it. He, she's having her pearl, her personality Jupiter in a defined center. Mm -hmm. And not only a defined center, it's actually forming a channel. Mm -hmm. So she has the harmonic gate, the other side of it. So th that's, very, that's very powerful. And it's a consistent energy where she has both the gates that are meeting between the, the root and the emotional. So for example, if you have your pearl in an open center, it's going to be less consistent. And it's going to be you living that, but also having this influx of energy. You are like a filter for all the energy around you, what comes from other people, what comes from even more like what comes from the transits, what comes from your conditioning, your culture, you're going to always kind of have to check in with that pearl and be like, am I feeling it for me? Am I feeling it for somebody else? So really, I would say that that's a kind of big thing. Jupiter is a very powerful planet. If you have it in an open center, you want to be, be very aware of the not self theme of that center. Other, if you are not aware of the not self theme, it can actually kind of trick you. Uh, so and there and also once you get it, I feel like it might it might shift your life even more than if you have it in a in a defined center where you kind of have been living it out as yourself, whether it's in the low frequency or the high frequency. It feels like more potential to shift and give back to the world through your wisdom of your pearl when it's in an open center. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that you know why it's for me so important to look at your dinkies and your human design you want to take it back to the body you want to see how it moves in the body graph you won't want to see how your body graph is interacting with the world with the transits with other people you know and i want to you know we at the beginning we were talking about how we're in the energy every six days the the cosmos is shifting and so for me let's i, I want to talk about this as a fractal because I live on my Jupiter line and that was a choice. It was a threshold I crossed because I knew that I could not be in the place that I was. And I had this knowing I needed to do astral cartography and I did that. And my place the, through astral cartography was the Pacific Northwest. Well, I didn't even know anybody in the Pacific Northwest, but I, once I hear this, I'm like, ah, oh, I want to live on my Jupiter line. That's, that's my pearl. I got to make this happen. And so I, you know, and the universe brought me contacts. It brought me Bella, it brought me our Delta sister, Jen. And I, plan this trip. I, you know, just packed my car and drove to the Pacific Northwest. That was a threshold because I was like, gosh, what would it feel like to actually live on my Jupiter line and came up here and not knowing it was a, a it was a threshold to pack my car and just, you know, try. And then getting up here and feeling how my body felt 
like, oh my gosh, I've come home um, to live right on my pearl line. So, you know, I'm covered in chicken skin, you know, but that's, that was a threshold for me. And, um, and just experimenting with that, it, it was big. Yeah. And Simone, that brings us in a little bit to what tomorrow is going to give us a taste of, you know, that variable orientation. What is the environment according to your human design where you, you know, where you feel the best? And, and I think your shores, or do you remember? Natural shores, like natural shores. I'm in the Pacific Northwest where there are natural shores everywhere. It is so easy to live on a natural shore. And I'm on my Jupiter line. So, you know, it just it, once, I, once I had the information and I was willing to go, th- you know, walk through that, that door. Or, or I love in the chat, somebody uh, wrote earlier on today um, that sometimes the threshold is exit right so for me it was the the choice to explore here was an exit from where I had lived in the desert for so long and an entry into something new so I loved how somebody in the chat had written you know sometimes thresholds are exits and and knowing you know have having that willingness to um to exit or to enter or 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 both as it was in in my case so yeah you know, willingness, it's such an important word. I don't know how many generators and manifesting generators that come to us and are not willing to live from their sacral truth. Like that is amazing to me. And at the same time, I, I do know myself, you know, and somebody who has been very connected to spirit and not as connected to the depth of the soul and the body from the beginning. Like that was my, that was really my challenge. And then at the end of the t- day, what I'm saying too, is that when I tap into that, when we tap into where the challenge is, whether it's an open center or something else, that's where the, the greatest expansion lies. So now there is nothing that gives me as much pleasure as realizing that spirit is not everything. There is soul, there is body, there is the underworld. And that is, you know, and when I don't have a preference, I get to experience, experience it all, which is the same thing with feminine and masculine. I think that is somewhere we could go and explore a little bit as well. But Simone, you are all about that sacred marriage. So when you decide whether you drink this or that, you know, what are you deciding with? What, what has the authority? So we were speaking about you being a generator, you have a sacral authority. Like you have the sacral that's there, even if you have an emotional authority. As a generator, the sacral is always in flow. And that's, you know, that, that's always there. And then the same thing, you know, we can, we can look at these different things. Like, what is it that is your authority? Do you have a preference of allowing your intellect, your more masculine to decide? Or is it like, where, where do you decide from when you even discern what's, it, what's the tre- threshold or what's an opportunity? Where does it come from? What part of you is like, you know, going towards that? Is it your, yeah, what part of you is doing it? And that's going to take time for you to be able to, to tune into that and tap into that, especially if you're, if you're really open and you're not, you're not sure like what's yours and what's not, you get to be influenced by the people that are around you. And I think that for these thresholds, it's important for us, like when you're saying yes to it, you're saying no to something else. So to pause before the threshold sometimes is a good thing. Sometimes it's awesome just to like leap through that and you're like, well, like (laughs) we'll figure it out later, but there's going to be opportunities where you're going to decide. And it also has to do with your personality. Are you the kind of person who like dips their toe in the water or just jumps in? Cause it doesn't, it doesn't mean you're wrong if you are dipping your toe in the water. There there's, there's no wrong about that. It's just, that's how you, that's how you like, like what, how you enter a room says so much about you. So think about how do you cross these thresholds? And some of these thresholds, you're like, look at me, I'm so confident walking through this or like, I'm kind of scared here. You know, I don't know what's behind here. Like, look at how you are saying yes to things and, and maybe where you kind of are holding back or you have trepidations or you're like nerve sighted about it. Like I'm nervous and I'm excited. I don't know what's going to happen. So looking at that, how do you, how do you enter a room? How do you walk through that threshold is also something cool. But what I wanted to say is that when you are, when you have a decision to make and you're, in, and you are in front of a threshold are you choosing something that is in your highest good and the best thing for you? Are you choosing something because, you know, I'm going to choose it over myself. If any of those decisions are abandoning yourself for something else, for family, for authority, for 
whatever it is, like anything that requires you to abandon yourself is probably not a great idea for you. But sometimes we don't even realize we're doing it. You know, we don't, we, we don't realize we're abandoning, abandoning ourselves until we get so far down the, la- the line from saying that yes. And we're in, we're in the experience of crossing that threshold. And we're like, shoot, I had to leave part of me behind. And I'm kind of pissed off that I left that part of me behind. It's like, oh, to get in the club, you have to, left, you have to leave behind this part of you. So you can't come in the club if, if, if you can't bring her with you. Okay, I'm just going to leave my inner child over here because she can't come with me. It's not safe in there, whatever. You stay here, I'll be back later. And then you go and you left her, you know? And she's this part of you and she's feeling like abandoned and you're dealing with that because it's inside of you. And you, you said yes to that decision, you know, knowing or not knowing that you couldn't bring that part of you, you know, for love, for family. Like I was saying, like, what has power over you? What, what is making you fragment? And it's a choice because it's, it's not that we get to blame that thing. It's a choice we make consciously or unconsciously. And that's something important as you're crossing the threshold. Is it that you are in your power and sovereignty saying yes to that thing? Or are you giving part of your power away and, and kind of handing something over to someone else or something else to walk through that door? Does that make sense? Is, am I being clear, clear about that? Yeah, and I, mean, I kind of, what I just felt myself doing is like, you know, I, I kind of want everybody to just feel into you, you and your body and like, how are you sitting right now? Are you sitting? Are you running around? Are you doing your dishes at the same time? Like, where are you doing this masterclass from? Are you in your head or in your body? So maybe just make sure that you're sitting, lying, moving, you know, that you're, that you're here, that you're in your body. You know, I want you to feel you're sitting, what's under you. I want you to feel the base of your spine. I want you to feel your breath. I want you to feel your belly. I want you to feel your solar plexus. Is there agitation? Do you feel calm? I want you to feel your heart, your lungs. Is there constriction? Can they open? I want you to feel your throat. Do you wish that you were on and could speak with us? Or do you feel like you don't really know what to say? Can you feel your third eye? Can you feel your head and the the energy around your crown? And then just take a moment to savor this word, sovereignty. Sovereignty. And just scan your body with this word sovereignty 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 and what do you notice do you notice freedom do you notice contraction or does it take you to some place of your body where there's discomfort or numbness, sovereignty? Or is it hard to even stay and be here in your body? Are you scribbling or scrawling or doing something else? Or are you you here staying with your own sovereignty, present in whatever happens? And just take a few more breaths and every, anything that you don't need, just exhale it, exhale it. If you need to move, you can move, you can make sound. Sovereignty. I choose sovereignty. And just allow that to work in you. <laughs> You know, and when you feel ready, just, you know, come back, come back and stay in your body, stay in your lungs, stay in your breath and keep tracking those small changes in your energy field, in your body, in what contracts and what expands. That's the basic polarities of the universe. What expands and what contracts. Once you're aware of that, I feel like that's, that's the start of, of being a master of our own reality. 
Thank you. There's no words in this space. I can feel my solar plexus expanding, my diaphragm giving me more, more space to flow and float and live in. And that feels so good. So if you want, you can write in the chat what you noticed, what you felt, if you were even able to just stop and drop the words and the pens and, and just be, I would love to hear. And I'm just gonna pray over the situation that all of us can, can be able to stay in this space of sovereignty and feel our own sense of power and our own sense of like choice to be human and a reminder that we're here choosing to live, choosing to thrive, choosing to be here. We made the choice, the threshold was crossed when we exited our mother's womb and decided I'm here, I'm ready, I'm ready to play. And I, and I pray that you have multiple thresholds come to you today. I want them to be magnetized so that you can start seeing the small and the big. And I want you to start looking at things as thresholds and, and staying in that sovereignty and that power and choosing the self and not abandoning any part of you. And from this place, just discerning what makes me feel alive and expansive and when I'm presented with a threshold or an opportunity, feel into future project yourself. Is this, is this expansive for me? Or if I say yes to this, is it con contractive? Or do I have to leave something behind? Because you can feel into that energy before you say yes to it. You have the power inside of you. So I pray that these, these thresholds come to you, magnetize to you, that there's plenty of them for you to have opportunities to start being mindful. Some of them might slip you and you might be like, I think that was a threshold. I don't know, maybe. And I'd love for you to, to stay in your, your sovereignty and in your power and say yes, like wholehearted, full-hearted yeses where it's all inclusive for you. I love the comments in the chat. You know, one person says, I feel my third eye supercharged and not so much my lower chakra. And thank you, uh, Aries. I'm an heiress with Gemini rising. My head is constantly active and I feel it needs to come into the body. And then was a white, another person says a blank whiteness in my core, like white out, nothing there. There's surely something to learn here. And then also person saying it was, it was a moment when I closed my eyes and I could go there, but when I open, it becomes harder. So I'm just even thinking, if you would close your eyes, what of this workshop would be, you know, you would probably have a different discernment. That is the 57, the city, clear audience. Now Richard calls clarity, but from the beginning it was clear audience. And it's to be able to tune into your body and feel unease or ease as you're digesting, as something is coming to you. Because everything that we're saying today might not be for you, and it's completely okay to have your body contract and say, this is not for me. And this piece is for me. So start to become picky, start to be discerning of what it is that you want to eat and what you want to swallow. And there was one really good question as well that I, so it said, I'm not sure if I can always be in a state of continual expansion. Isn't the contraction piece a necessary part of the process? And that's what I'm saying. Like the universe is built you know, we could say that of contraction, contraction, expansion, a child could not be born into this reality if we didn't have contraction. That's what makes us be born. And also an orgasm is a continuous kind of expansion and contraction in that in that orgasmic feeling. So that's what we are made up of. So there is no need to judge the contraction even sometimes like we were saying your body might say that's not for me and you might even do this the important thing is that you don't stay like this crippled the, the important thing is that you allow yourself to go through another door another threshold 
maybe like somebody was saying before, the threshold is to not stay crippled like this, but to actually do this and to, to turn towards something that's more nurturing. So I would say use your body and the contraction and opening of your body as a way shower for you know, your aliveness and how you wanna feel in this world. That, that, would be, that would be a better compass than your mind for sure. I love that you brought us back to the body, Bella, and I was noticing how my breath shifted. And as I was reading some of the comments that you read out loud, I could feel um, in different people's body, the breath. And I'd love, I would love for you to add in the, the comments, if you notice your breath change, if you notice your breath in your body more, when we came right into the body. And, um, and I love how you were talking about digestion. Like this is a lot of energy. When are you in a lot of energy? And when do you, when do you contract? And when, are you, when does it feel good to um, move into that um, increase of energy or energetic flow? And what I'm feeling, the masculine and the feminine, that's the tempering. What we often do is that we become so excited and then we kind of got, just go with the spirit of it. And what I think in our little team that we're getting better at is instead of speeding up everything as we go, we actually invite the body, we invite the feminine. Instead of just, we can spin away in spirit so easily and it's so cool. <laughs> but at the same time, then afterwards, it's like the body, it, it just kind of feels weird sometimes so I I feel like that's part of our process that for sure has a synchronicity with with what's you know what's here and what's meant to happen and it's always about returning to the body to let it's it's speaking to you in every moment and I know that when we spin out in spirit and we get off the call and we feel I feel so high I immediately go and eat something super bad because I know that I need to ground and it's not like I consciously I'm like I'm starving and I'm starving my body's telling me like ground ground but if you could just go outside and ground and consciously breathe in you know it'll bring you back here but we have patterns that we do like these these habits that we form to help us regulate you know just like that i mean our body is great at regulation mm -hmm. and like you were saying digestion if you can just focus on being like the sovereignty is a huge piece and then breathing in and that that is the expansion happening in your body and then when you breathe out it's letting go everything that's not you so if you can just be present and not have a wall up and this is what i tend to do I'm like wall wall and, and okay, I'll let that in. But I think if we like let our walls down and you use your breath and it's like, if it sits in the, your body and you're like, no, that's not good. You can just breathe it out. And it's so automatic, the breath. And so you don't even have to consciously think about it. Your mind likes to shut things down all the time. But if like most of you got into that space of there is no thought and it's just easy just to breathe. You don't have to worry about anything. Breath is thriving, you know? Survival is when you stop breathing. So, or breathe really fast. So long, deep breaths will help you return back home to yourself. So it's all the about- courage to, to courage. come back here. This is a courage. This is hard. If Richard Rudd says that the 57 is, is coding the human core wound, the unease we feel in our body, that's where the earth is right now. I don't think it's, it's uh, like, I think there is a purpose for why we're doing this when the, when the earth is in Gene Key 57, unease, intuition, clarity or clear audience. When you are back in your body, you're gonna start to hear, your intuition is gonna speak to you. And then you don't have to go and look for the thresholds because the thresholds are there. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just that, yeah, it's only from a place of being home that you can walk through the door. <laughs> I love that. That is completely true. And Bella is talking about the programming partners with the 51 and the 57. The unease is there, but the agitation, the thresholds come from these shocks in life. And if you can just breathe and return to the body, you're going to be able to hear and discern if this is right for you. You know, your body's going to tell you, you're going to hear your soul, your spirit saying, go through, don't go through you know, but we have to pause and not react to the agitation. I'm going to run away. It's like that fight flight response. Are you going to like jump through the door and, or like run away? It's like pause for a second. And it's so hard because it goes against our natural survival. 
right? We're like, oh, I, oh my God, it's scary. Let me, like, let me have the tendencies. Like whatever your pattern is, are you a runner, you know? Or are you like charge into the battle? Like, what do you do? And that would be cool to, for you to be able to, to witness that for yourself. And how can you let your intuition come alive in your body and know I'm thriving. This isn't a threat. Let's just breathe. Yeah, it's freaking, it's freaking my mind out, but let's just breathe and return home and listen to our intuition or our our inner authority. Do you guys have any closing words before we remind them about tomorrow and all that stuff before I get into the practical stuff? No, okay, practical, here we come. So this is the conclusion of, of day one. We're talking about courage, the courage to thrive. We spoke about thresholds. Um, If you're just joining us at the tail end of this, you can watch the replay. It is on Facebook. It will remain on Facebook. Um, But day two, three, and four will be inside the the closed Zoom container. And the replays will always be posted in the course. So again, you can go to academy.unlockyourdesign.com, sign up for that, and you'll register and you'll have access to that free course. This course is not going to be free forever. You will be disenrolled after a period of time. Um, So I would watch the replays as soon as you can. You won't have it forever. Uh, So take initiative and be here live or watch the replays as soon as you can. If you feel like somebody needs to hear this, if this is for someone after you've sat through this and you're like, whatever it's opened up in you, if you believe that somebody might benefit from this, we'd love you to share it. We'd love you to invite them. You can share it on Facebook or give them the link to um, the academy. Um, Tomorrow, we're going into motivation and we're gonna go into motivation through human design. So we're going to help you align to your true motivation. And so there's six different forms of motivation that we will go into and expand upon tomorrow. You're going to want to pull um, your professional human design chart that shows the variable orientation. If you go on to bit.ly slash genetic matrix, you're gonna be able to to run a chart, but the basic free chart does not have the information we're talking about tomorrow. Um, If you register um, for a threshold, we have a video where Bella explains in detail how to sign up for the professional version of genetic matrix, which by the way, you you can do it for a day and it's super cheap. And you want all these charts because there's so many in there. You can explore how many possibilities there are for you to run a chart. But all you need for tomorrow is um, the quantum, the foundational quantum chart where it shows everything. And Bella, Bella goes through the demonstration in, um, in, in the course. I think we'll post the video as well on Facebook for those of you that are on Facebook, because I think everybody needs to, to know what's possible in genetic matrix. It's awesome. Um, and so tomorrow will be motivation. Day three, we're going into your allies. So when you are making decisions where you are approaching a threshold or because it happens on every hero's journey, right? We get to that point where there's that call to adventure and you're at this threshold where you're going to have to enter the underworld, but you're going to have your your guides, your supernatural aid, the people that are come to help you make that decision or guide you towards a certain point until you can do it all on your own. So we have 64 allies that we're going to introduce you to. Um, we have a beautiful way of bridging the gap between human design, gene keys, astrology, I Ching, all of that. We're going to introduce you to these archetypes on um, day three. And then day four, we're going to talk about this big threshold that you are going to have the opportunity, the, the, the invitation to step through if you decide, if you so, if you, if you choose to decide or whatever, <laughs> if you decide to go through. Um, so those are the, that's our trajectory for the next three days. And we're so glad that you joined us today, whether it is in the Zoom container, thank you so much, or on Facebook. We appreciate you. And uh, we're excited to dive into motivation tomorrow so that you can make decision according to your true motivation. So thank you.